Hi, I'm Father Robert Lord of Real Faith. I'm a professor of philosophy at St. John's University. And I'd like to talk to you about some uh, Holocaust films, um, some really exceptional films. Uh, I don't know whether any of you have seen the, the play, The Diary of Anne Frank. It's a, it's a true story, and it is a great story. It was put on the screen. It was directed by George Stevens, who was one of the great Hollywood directors. My own opinion is it's a good film. It's not a great film, but a great film is Schindler's List. Uh, Steven Spielberg's Schindler's List, I think that's a great one. And I think Roberto Benigni's Life is Beautiful is also a great Holocaust film. Now, some critics, or at least one, one Catholic critic, uh, didn't like Life is Beautiful because he thought Benigni was laughing at the Holocaust, and the Holocaust is not funny. No, I thought what Benigni was doing was saying that even in this horrible situation, in this awful situation, you could find some kind of meaning. It reminded me just a little bit of Viktor Frankl's masterpiece, um, Man's Search for Meaning. But the main Holocaust film I want to focus in on, I think, it's, I think it's got a lot to say to Catholics, is The Pawn Broker. It's based on Edgar Lewis Wallant's uh, novel. Now, Edgar Lewis Wallant was Jewish, and yet uh, in The Pawn Broker, he uses a lot of Christian symbolism, and he did it in another novel he wrote. I, I directed a thesis by a student at St. John's, and neither of us could figure this out. There was no evidence that Wallant ever wanted to become a Catholic or a Christian. Uh, and there was no, nobody really explained why he kept returning to these Christian symbols, but he does. And they're in the pawnbroker. It's the story of a philosophy professor in Germany. The Holocaust begins and he, his wife, his mother, his father, and his children are all thrown into concentration camps. Everybody except the pawnbroker, whose name is Saul Nazerman. Everyone else dies, his mother, father, wife, and children. Um, He's fighting the memories of this horrible experience. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want these memories to enter his consciousness. Uh, the anniversary of his wife's death is approaching, and so he's particularly concerned to to keep these memories at bay. Now, Lumet tried to figure out how can I convey that in a movie, and I think he did it brilliantly. What he did was this: as the movie goes along, he shoots in quick shots of, of scenes in the Holocaust and uh, uh, the scenes in the concentration camp, qu very quick. At the beginning of the movie, you don't know what they are. You say, what, what, what's happening? It looks like, the, looks like something's wrong with the projector. But as the film develops, the shots last longer and longer. And finally, in the climax of the film, uh, a prostitute comes to uh, Nazimin's pawn shop and she wants some money. And she's going, to, uh, she's going to have sex with him if he wants. And so she gets undressed in front of him, and she keeps saying to him, look at me, look at me. It doesn't cost anything to look at me. And this was the first American film that had female nudity from the waist up. It was condemned by the Catholic office. It used to be called the Legion of Decency. And they said basically this, this is obviously a serious film, but if we don't condemn this, then the floodgates are going to open up, and there'll be nudity in, in all sorts of films. And they were right. That's exactly what happened. But I think maybe three years, four years later, they changed their rating, and they said this is a film for adults. Because this scene, there's nothing suggestive about it. Here's how, here's how Lumet did it. As the prostitute is getting undressed in front of the pawnbroker, he is thinking of what the Nazis did to his wife. Uh, and so uh, rather than finding this seductive, he finds it awful. He finds it disgusting. Uh, it's, such a, it's such a powerful scene. Now, I, I think that the, the, this film will have special interest for Catholics for this reason. There's a young boy working for the pawnbroker named Jesus. And he's very, he wants the uh, pawnbroker to teach him how to make money. And the pawnbroker, all through the movie, never treats anybody humanly. You get many, many shots of him behind a screen in the pawn shop. Why doesn't he treat people humanly? Because everybody he loves has died. Now he, start, he starts to, be, to care a little bit about this young Puerto Rican boy named Jesus. He begins to care a little bit, and he doesn't want to do that. He's afraid to do that. In the climax of the film, some hoodlums come into the pawn shop, and they tell the pawnbroker, either open the safe or we will shoot you. And the pawnbroker wants to die because everyone he loves has died, so he locks the safe. And as the hoodlum goes to shoot him, Jesus runs in front of him and catches the bullet. The hoodlums run away. And Jesus staggers out onto the street. There's blood all over the place. The pawnbroker goes out, and he holds the dying, the dying Jesus in his arms. Okay, so Jesus has died for him. Then the pawnbroker goes back into the pawn shop, and we get this very dramatic scene. There's a sticker in the pawn shop, uh, uh, like a pick almost, that they used to have in, in tailor shops. And every time someone pawns something, the pawnbroker takes a ticket, gives one half to the person, and then puts this on the sticker. And so what Lumet does, Sidney Lumet, the director, does, he 
reviews quickly some of the scenes of all these people. So these tickets represent their lives. And then the pawnbroker takes his hand and he jams it onto the sticker, uh, onto the pick, almost as though uh, like a crucified hand. And he takes his hand off and he walks out of the pawn shop down the street. And it, as it ends, you think, your first reaction is, my gosh, this has to be the saddest ending of any movie, but I don't think so. Now, this is my interpretation, and if you see the film, you can you disagree with me. I think he has risen from the dead. I think through Jesus' death and his identification with all these people, he will never treat people this way again. He, he has come back to life through Jesus' death. That's the way I see it. So there are a lot of good Holocaust films. This is one of the best. This is an extremely well-made movie, very moving. I believe Rod Steiger you know, should have gotten the Academy Award for his role. He's terrific in it. So uh, it, it's, not, it's not an easy film to watch, but I think it's a great film to watch. Thank <laughs> you.